guys, it's me. I'm back. What's up, party people? This is this this show is taking a turn for the. Oh. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Welcome to uh, another episode of Monster Bass Live. I apologize for the uh, any kind of uh, background noise you might hear. I had my my laptop on, so it was playing in the background, so you might have heard it twice. But we got a great show for you. I'm really excited about this. Uh, you know. Depending on where you are in the world, uh, summer is in right now in full effect, and uh, some would say it's some of the best fishing that there is. I might argue that it's you know it's just as good as it is in August or September. Um, but uh, we'll nonetheless we'll debate that a little bit later. Uh, we're going to take you through uh, a little bit of the news that we've been uh, we've been talking about here in the office. And uh, we're going to talk a little Grande Bass. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that I've been shopping for. And uh, as always, as always, we're, we're glad to see you guys here. So uh, thank you guys for taking the time to be here with us today. We are going to talk about top water. Um, and when Rafi's ready, we're going to talk a little bit about Grande Bass uh, because we've got some exciting news to share for you. But as as always, I love to start the show by celebrating some of your catches from the previous week. And if you want to submit them, you can send them over to me at monsterbass.com slash PB. Uh, doesn't have to be your PB. It's just easy to remember, right? Like, so just upload your pick, and if we use it, we'll send you some stuff from the garage. We are currently up to date with all of our sends. So if we've used your stuff and uh, we promise to send you something, we're going to send you something. So... Uh, Let's, let's head over to the trophy room now, Fixie. Our, our first up is Kerry Wagner. I swear to God, this guy's caught other caught fish before. Five pounds, three ounces with a stiff arm. But it says February. Yeah, see, I think we've used this picture before. I don't know. I mean, either way, he still caught five pounds, three ounces, and that's two ounces more than my PB. So congratulations to you. Next up is uh, Jocelyn Ellis, seven pounds, two ounces. I mean, she stiff armed that thing. It's bigger than her. From the looks of it, I mean, seven pound, two ounces, and, and God bless her on the Carolina rig. Next up is uh, Pierce Bronson Gibbs, eight pounds. No way. Eight pounds, two ounces. We might go back to this picture because yeah. I, think, I, think Pierce is, I think Pierce is giving us his best Remington steel and making everything look easy. I don't know if this is eight pounds, two ounces. I could be wrong, but he caught on a weightless fluke. Next up is Victor Eureta. My boy Victor caught this on a popper in Texas. Good on him. And then last but not wow, last but not least, Caleb Tarpley. Four pounds, nine ounces on a worm. Congratulations to you guys. And if you've caught something recently and you want to share it with us, uh, I would love to see it because nothing makes me happier than when I see you guys sharing stuff that you're proud of. And uh, whether it's three pounds or 13 pounds, I don't care. I mean, mine's only 5'1", and I run a fishing company. So uh, I have opportunities to fish with some of the best people in the world, and I still only caught a five-pounder. So listen, be proud of whatever you caught. I am. Travis Manson put me on it. It was uh, a really fun day catching smallmouth, and uh, it's, a, it's a fish I won't forget. And uh, I'm on the hunt for the next one. But all right, so for, uh, for everyone that tuned in, uh, that's tuned in this week that wasn't here last week, you know, just to recap, we did talk about how we are going to build a bait finesse system. Uh, a ba yes, a bait finesse system. Uh, we're going to work with Will Smith, who designed the Lunker Sticks. And if you want to learn more about it, you can watch the rewind of last week's episode. It was a great one. We talked about the rods, how we're going to design them, what goes into it, and all that fun stuff. And uh, you can learn all about that uh, wherever you consume your favorite podcast, Spotify, and so on. So... Let's uh, let's not wait any longer. I'd like to bring the guys in and see what they're up to. So uh, let's bring in. Let's let's start with Rafi, right. and let's get a let's get a Grande Bass update in a minute because uh, I think Rafi, we had a pretty good day today. We we did. There you go. Wow. You're good. You're good. Rafi. Yeah, we had a pretty good day. I don't hear you, Rafi. Uh oh. 
<laughs> hey, Pix. Yeah, All right, here we go. Here we go. I can hear myself now. How you doing, Rafi? Well, I'm a little shiny. Yeah. Uh, a little sweaty. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm doing I'm doing great, Rick. How Did are you, you have doing? a good phone call? I did have a good phone call. I cannot share that phone call live. Okay. Uh, but I will be sharing the phone call live. Okay. Uh, in a month, Ooh. and if all goes well, uh, a couple times a year. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Good call, Rafi. Thank you. All right. Why don't you uh, Why don't you give us a little grande bass update? Okay. Well. For all of you who have been harassing me, which is absolutely nobody, our Facebook is finally up and running and uh, connected to, to Instagram. And I f- I'm feeling really good about that because, Rick, it's only taken me three months to, uh, to figure that out. And by figuring it out, I, I think it was me doing a little bit of begging and crying and uh, asking for your help. So thank you for figuring that out for me. You're welcome. Uh, we also got word, and uh, as evidenced by a, uh, a post, that uh, the Colony Shields has product in stock, and we are actually, I can't remember if they called us the, uh, the, the bait of the, uh, of the week or the bait of the day, but either way, I'm excited. And I have a request of anyone who is listening. Um, if you are... Anywhere in the vicinity of, uh, of the Colony Shields. That's in Dallas, right? It's in, it's in Dallas. Yeah. Bl- yeah. Please, please, please go there. Even if it's just one pack of Grande Bass and, uh, and purchase Grande Bass, I really want to make a good impression on them. I really want to show them that the community will come out and, uh, and support Grande Bass. And uh, the, the more we impress them, the better the opportunity that we have um, to distribute across uh, Shields nationwide. So this is a really, really big deal. It's, uh, it's an important one. And uh, if anyone out there thinks that they owe me a favor, uh, please, um, I'm cashing them all in by asking you to go out and buy uh, one pack of Grande Bass baits from uh, the Colony Shields. I owe you a favor. Okay. Are okay, you- so here's what I'm going to do. Let's, let's do this, Rafi. How about if anyone's watching this, if you go to the Colony, or if you go to the Shields Colony, I don't know if it's Colony Shields, Shields Colony, it's just their big giant store, okay? Uh, if you go there and you buy a pack of, I don't care how many packs of bait you buy, obviously the more the better, and you can get it, you can get it less expensive at Shields than you can on our own website. Uh, show us, a, send Rafi a, a copy of your receipt, and we'll reimburse you for a free or, or what's the easiest way? Let's let's just let's just send them another free pack. So if you buy a pack at Colony, oh. we'll we'll send you another pack. Is our way of, of saying of thank your you. of your choice, of, not of your not choice. an identical one. That's yeah, yeah. awesome, Rick. Yeah, thank you. That's a great way to uh, to to I don't know. Yeah, repay the favor that I just found out that you owed me. That's awesome. Okay. Um, oh, uh, in other Monster Bass live news, apparently Lone Wolf. Uh, got his package, and it took him, uh, according to his, <laughs> according to his uh, message that he posted in the chat, it took him a little while to figure out that the naked ladies that we sent him from your garage were, in fact, golf tees. So I, I can't figure out, Lone Wolf, if I hope that you are or are not a golfer. Hopefully there was uh, better stuff in there than that, but mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. There was some really good Surprise. stuff in there. There yeah. was some good stuff. I think that even if, if, if I had sent this package, this care package to Chris, he would have been happy, and then he would have called and laughed about the, the naked lady golf tees that I just threw sure. in by chance. And sure. Speaking of Chris, let's bring him in because we, we've kept him waiting for too long. Okay, and, like and I, want, I want Chris to hear about this uh, new retailer, though, because uh, we got? do have – we, well, we opened up uh, Jay's Outdoors in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Wow. So uh, big outdoors. thank you. Yeah, big thank you to Jay Lee. Carrying our brand, uh, he so far is, I think, the only game in town. So if you're in Kentucky and you're looking to buy local, Jays. That's 
Get out the Jays. That's cool. No, congrats yeah. on that. You're growing this thing. I'm excited to see where this goes. The the colony go down to how cool is that? You're offering to replace somebody's investment with more grande bass. You guys yeah. are awesome. So yeah, get out there, support them. I mean, if I could, if I could fly down there, there's a trip coming up. I go clean the shelf. Just buy them all. Nice. Yes, this is the greatest stuff ever. Just fill up a cart, just dumping it in there, and and that would be a good good impression. So it's yeah. gonna be exciting to see what happens. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, uh, no windy Wednesday. No windy. John's out there with, uh, we had our local tournament, like our biggest turnout we've ever had on Sunday here at the lake. And the kid that won, it's like this up and coming guy. He's awesome. Yep. And he actually won the California high school fishing tournament. So he's qualified on this national tour, but he's been replacing me fishing with John. They actually took some money like two weeks ago. They were well, like, like in sixth place though. So. Oh. Yeah, no, they're they're climbing up the ladder, learning. The delta's been stingy. It's tough fishing. The lake here, we we actually had some good numbers turned in and some good fish. So, now all's well. Wendy Wednesday's going on without me. Imagine that. But uh, I just want to be here at the show and chat about fishing. I I think it's fighting words. People are talking about top water already. So, this is going to be fun to see where this goes. Yeah, listen. I mean, it's top water, and we sent I sent everyone uh, a bunch of top water baits. But I think it begs the question. Is it overrated? Like, is it really all that it's cracked up to be? Or am I just as happy, I don't know, catching big fish on a Carolina rig? I, you know, I, don't know. I, I Can we pose a question? Can we put that for the chat? Like, I want to know from the chat's perspective. You said this, and I don't know if I'm going to get it exactly right when we talked prior. Would, would you be okay catching your PB on a Carolina rig? Or does it have to be topwater? And that's that thing is like, would you... How important is top water to people is really what I'm getting at. Is that the only thing that matters? Because everyone's all about top water. And somebody said it, I think they said it started the Civil War. I have my own perspective of top water. You know, it's like it's Bud Light or whatever, all these arguments. I want to get to the bottom of this because I I love top water. And I think it's tied into, I'll go into the science behind why I think it's so important with people because we're visual creatures, but we'll get into that later. But I can tell you, I think top water, the discussion is a little overrated, but. I want to get into that. You know, we'll, we'll talk about that. We got a while today. Yeah. I mean, I sent everyone an entire, uh, an entire bag full of top water baits for the most part. I mean, everything from up and coming brands to brands like rebel that you're, you know, the rebel jumping minnow that your grandfather probably had. I mean, it's tried and true. It's, 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 it's a consistent bait, but you know, what makes top water so special other than the fact that you can see it? Yeah, I, I think that's the, the key for me is visual creatures. Probably 95% of our feedback is humans. If you have mm -hmm. vision, is vision. Those that don't have the use of their eyes, they're going to they're gonna be able to say that this guy's crazy. But because we do rely on our eyes so much, that's the fun, the top water. You cast out this bait and you actually get to see the take. Mm -hmm. I think that's really one of those important things. The other part is it's a fantastic fight. That fish is already at the surface. It's acrobatic. So again, the argument would be is the fish is jumping up and a lot of times you can lose the top water fish easier because they are out of the water and you don't have that water resistance against the head. That really slows down the head wobble back and forth, the bait flipping around. You definitely lose more fish top water. So advantageous you know like the the advantage is on the fish's side but it is really fun because they're already at the surface they're going to probably jump two or three more times on their way back to the boat so that plays into the excitement uh, but i you know again it's really down to are you fishing for the enjoyment or are you fishing for the way you want to catch fish and i think we've kind of if you're not a tournament angler and it's not about catching the exact size fish or competing i think fishing for the enjoyment is super important uh, the one thing with topwater, though, you send me a whole box of topwater baits. Mm -hmm. If my local lake, if I can't access the lake when topwater bite is on, I think that's that other question is, is when is topwater important? When is topwater working? And I think we need to jump into some of that, too, because topwater does not always work. Fish are not always going to come up to the surface and decide to take a bait on the top of the water. Uh, in fly fishing, I go back to the world of fly fishing. I grew up. It's fish are looking down or they're looking up. Yeah. I mean, I think the other thing about top Side water, head right, is, enough. I think the other thing about top water though, is, is like time of day, right? Like I got a lot going on in the morning. I just do have a busy yeah. schedule. And so <laughs> if I'm going to go fishing, I probably, unless it's the weekend, I can't get out early in the morning 
And I certainly right. can't get out late at night because I have a kid. So, so I top mean, water may not be, it's probably not going to be your friend. I mean, that's the reality. Yeah. If you get some wind, if the fish feel safe, they'll feed top water. Fish are survival specialists. And if they think a bird can take them, if there's another predator, obviously, if the water's clear, coming all the way up to the surface and exposing yourself where we've got, we got osprey, we got eagles. That's a chance a fish can get eaten. So they're like, that, that meal's got to be pretty enticing, be pretty big for me to go up and risk my life to eat it. And I think that's where top water comes in play. So you, you're spot on. When does top water work? Historically, first thing in the morning and in the in night, because the fish are feeding all night long. They're not like, the, they don't come out and eat and then just go to bed. Uh, they're right. feeding the, the hero fish, the, the fisherman that finds the biggest fish, oftentimes they find the fish at night because the fish, they feel protected. They feel safer. Yeah, Chris, I got to change the topic just for a second. I, I don't understand what's going on in the chat. There's, there's a poll up. They would, <laughs> more people would rather catch an average bass on top water than catch their PB on a Carolina rig. What is wrong with you guys? I don't understand. No, I That's the to... dumbest thing I've ever heard. I'm sorry. Okay, no so... disrespect to any of you, but like, if I can catch my PB, I want to catch my PB. And if I could grab a uh, Chaplin Caps 13 pounds, six ounce, and drag it on a, and catch it on a Carolina rig, I'm taking that all day long because for the rest of my life or until I catch something bigger, I get to say 13-6 instead of 5-1. Uh, well, that that's the bragging rights, but internally, and this is where I think the big swim bait crowd comes from, the people that fish certain specific, I don't even know how to categorize it, but whatever makes them feel good, makes them feel cool or what they enjoy. I, I like the people that are saying that standing up for top water, fishing high noon and forcing a rat bite. When there's some texture on the water, you really cut down the amount of fish you're going to catch, but because you enjoy it. Hey, I'm sure. all about that fish. I get it. Fish what you like. So that's, it is an interesting concept is like, what's then you're talking about like the PBs that came up today. Great point. 5.3. That was a spotted bass. That's a huge spotted bass in connection to that seven pound largemouth that was after it, you could argue all day long of which one is bigger by species. If yours is a five, what, what was your PB? Wasn't that a smallie that five, five, seven? five, one smallmouth. So a five, one smallie is so much bigger than a five, one largemouth in yeah, perspective sure. of species. But right. again, now you're breaking down bass fishing, your PB. Now you're going into bass fishing. So do we have to start saying, Oh, this is my top water PB. I don't, people just don't normally do that. They're like, I yeah. just really like top water. So I would love it if somebody would call in and be like, I like this over top water because I'm going to be on, I hate to put myself in that camp. I prefer catching fish top water as well. I prefer to see the strike, to see the bite, some fancy about laying into a fish on like maybe a jig hit, but to visually watch a fish come up, take the bait, knock it up into the air. It's incredible. And I'm, I'm in that camp. I prefer fishing top water. So uh, we need, we need some people to call in and change our mind. Tell me, tell me why, why a Carolina rig. Um, I, I mean, there's, it's funny. A comment comes right up. Carolina rig fishing couldn't be more boring. If you're catching fish, Carolina rig all day long, nonstop, big, deep hook sets. What a blast. But yeah, you know, that's, listen, I don't want to fish a Carolina rig, but if that's, what's working like, and I can catch a big fish, I'm catching it. I'm throwing it all day long. But the phone lines are open, 323-210-1180. I'd love to hear, you know, we'd both love to hear what you have to say. And, uh, and, and while we're at it, I want to give a shout-out to Ashley Schubert for not talking about forward-facing sonar in the chat. It's overplayed. And, uh, honey, you have no idea what you're talking about. I love that you tune in, but you have, a, you have a center to build. Please go build it and stop watching me. you got to go make money so that Daddy can go fishing. That's all I got to say. Okay. I love, um, it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> can't wait to hear what everyone has to say about that one. Uh, while we're at yeah. it, though, we do have, uh, you know, one of, my fav one of my favorite baits since we're talking top water, honestly, is the Mad Max popper. And, of course, yeah. I left it on the dining room table. But you no, all know no. what it is. You all know what it is. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, uh, you know, the Mad Max Popper. It's uh, it's it's one of my favorite baits. It's pretty much when I talk with you know the community, they it's it's always in the top one two, and uh, there's a new one. And, oh wait, is it a is it a popper? Or is it a popper? I think we should cover that first. Like what's the, what's the difference? 
Popper, nothing. It depends on where you come from. That's <laughs> how you really? say the words. So, it's like Rapala yeah, I mean, and no, Rapala. So it's yeah. Well, that's a whole another discussion. I think that we could spend two is shows it? on. But is it yeah. Rapala? Is it a popper? Is it a papar? Uh, you know, poppy or whoever maybe fished a papar. So I I love it. A popper, your popper is a little bit more undersized. The fish, uh -huh. the fish. Can we talk about the most overrated? Because I I want to throw this out there. This is a this is a bait. I'm just gonna hold it up. Like okay. if you don't know what this bait is, you've been you've been sleeping underneath a rock for the last like five ten years. I don't even yeah. know when did this come out. So we got this thing. We got the whopper plopper, right? And fish Ooh. had never seen anything like this. This is the perfect spinning back end. Plop 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 plop. Incredible action. You you literally don't have to know how to fish anything. You throw it as far as you can. And you can spaz reel it, you can slow reel it, that it can draw different strikes, but you almost can't mess it up. That to me was a bait that came out that I would go fishing in the evening or at night with friends and I'd say, hey, just throw this thing. And audibly, you could just listen to the strikes. You hear this thing, blah, 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 and then just, just this huge noise of fish coming and slurping it. Really big fish sometimes just kind of slurp it from behind. They just suck it in with their gill pop. But that bait, incredible. I've, I've fished that bait some in the last two years. And it seems like so many people had thrown that bait that it's almost like the fish learned it. Yeah. And it's, it's just maybe in my local water, they'd seen it so many times that it stopped working. Mm. My connection to that bait is I prefer fishing a bait where I'm creating the action, thinking of a jerk bait. I'm the one popping it. And I know you can do different reel speeds and variations of your retrieve, but a bait that I throw out and I just retrieve it back, I prefer the line twitch, the rod twitch, all these different things. And that's why I prefer a spook and I, and your popper. It's one of those things that you can create a wake, but also create the pop and that noise that that water displacement of something really going crazy with your popper is a unique way to fish. So what do you have a, do you have a, a top water bait you think is overrated? I mean, the Whopper Plopper for sure. I mean, they copied obviously this one. This is the uh, Papa Chomp from Bait Lab in a limited edition color that was in this month's box. I think they were the original, but I'm just the OG. Saying. Uh, the OG. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We, like yeah, you got the the Chapo. You got all the different brands that have their version of something that has yeah. this tail that oscillates and it spins and it splashes water and it does great. It catches fish. They're awesome, and and that's that one thing is like how. How much does that work better than a buzz bait? I think a buzz bait is completely different. The problem I have with the whopper plopper is you've got this treble hook that's belly on the belly end hanging straight down. So if there's any debris on the water at all, if there's any grass at all, mm. it, it fouls up, it fouls in the tail. So if you're fishing somewhere that's not clear water at the surface, it's not effective. It doesn't actually keep plopping. So that's one thing that that is a drawback. I prefer a buzz bait. I, you know, like I'm talking about different things. Frogs, of course, are the premier. And I know you love fishing with frogs. You always oh, yeah. talk about how much it's just your favorite thing. And nobody yeah. ever misses a fit. Nobody misses fish nobody. with frogs. And that's, nobody. That's, that's the irony is that is one bait when you fish a pond or a body water that has grass. There's no other way to fish the top surface other than some style of frog like that because of the way that the hooks are embedded and it keeps it out of the schmuck. Mm. So I think that's a really cool thing to, to figure that out. But man, the top water, I don't know. It, it is to me, it's, it's like an emotional connection beyond just the catching of the fish. It is yeah. seeing that fish strike and being involved with the fish, even the misses on a frog, really cool to see what a frog, sometimes the fish hit it specifically with their tail and they tail slap it to stun it. And all of a sudden your frog flies like three feet off to the side and you're like, well, there's no. nothing for me to do there. Yeah. But, I'll be you know, honest. Frog, you, you, fi frog fishing to me is probably the most frustrating uh, technique on the planet. And I know yeah. that it, it, it has to do with two things. One, I don't get enough reps. And two, it's the patience, right? Because the moment you feel it, you start, you yank on that thing. And then right. you see this frog go flying through the air like Superman. You're like, ah, oh, I screwed that one up. Yeah. And That's so that for me, it's count, just frustrating. Countdown. You got to wait. Right. You got to get the frog that comes up to grab the frog. You got to get them to close their mouth, swim underwater. Because the fish, the apex predator, they know they get that frog or they don't. That's on purpose. Let it get its mouth closed. And then you set that hook, you know, whether you're waiting one second or whatever, mm -hmm. you're counting that pause. I'll tell you, John fished with a bunch of pros when he was co-angling. And he passed on a little secret. And a lot of people know this. And, and I love doing it. Frogfish yeah. 
with someone else and they'll fish really productive water frog fishing. And I don't care who they are, maybe not like an Ish Monroe. He might not miss three out of five, two out of five, whatever, but your average pro is going to miss several frog fish. You sit behind them yeah. and wait with a wacky worm. When they miss the frog, simply throw the wacky worm exactly where the frog was. That is the key to the follow-up bait. No matter what, you will get strikes because that fish missed the frog. And then all of a sudden here comes this little wacky worm floating down. They puff their gills, suck it in, and you catch the fish that somebody missed. Yeah, I'm so sure the guy it, in the front of the boat wouldn't mind at all if I did that. It, so the, the pro actually, what John was telling me, he's like, okay, listen, I'm going to be throwing these frog spots. When you see a blow up and I miss it, immediately catch that fish. Really? And they're working to get, oh yeah. And that was the key is hmm. you, you can't throw the frog back in. Once the fish has seen the frog, they're not going to go normally back and hit it. A small mouth, sometimes they'll go back after the same bait, but large mouth frog fishing, you miss, follow it with, with some kind of worm right there and you'll catch mm -hmm. it. That's your new frog fishing. You just the secondary spot waiting for somebody that misses. You know, it's it's a good way. Yeah, you know, you asked you asked before, like what are what are some of the most overrated topwater baits? I I can think of a few, and uh, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you one that uh, I think I'm gonna upset a few people, and I'm gonna give oh. you a second one that I think people will be like, yeah, of course, this is garbage. Uh, uh, and uh, I apologize for the use of the word garbage. That's right. I don't, yeah. But all right, so uh, the Spro Bronze Eye Frog. It is. Listen, I can show you a dozen frogs that are literally compress, feel exactly the same way, use the exact same hook. It's no better than another frog. Prove me wrong. Why is it better? Why is the Spro Bronze Frog better than I'm gonna I'm gonna insert the name? Uh, I don't know a frog from I don't really care what brand. I don't. Pick it. <laughs> yeah, I I don't no, know. That's I think true. You're, you're, you're you're yeah. I mean the fat bastard. You could go. It's it's definitely well, better than some of the, <laughs> some of. The listen, let's let's not let's 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 call a, sp a spade a spade. The the fat bastard frog. You can't find that thing anywhere. It is so. Wait, no. okay, it's such on, a collector's item. You can't find it anywhere. And if you've got it, I would list that thing on Amazon for a thousand or on eBay for a thousand dollars. Christmas party gone wrong, thousand dollars all day long. Someone's gonna buy it. And then the worst, the worst top water bait ever, for sure has to be the Guggen Squad's knockoff. I don't remember what it's called. The Guggen Squad's knockoff of the Whopper Plopper might be the worst top water bait ever. They were like. Well, let's not completely knock right. it off. Let's cut the that bait took, in half and put the revolver that, thing in. That took yeah. a minute. That, that, that took a minute. All right. Now, oh, now we're talking. dude. Don't, I, yeah, I, would wear a white, I would wear a white glove when you touch that oh, thing. Yeah, I, I should probably just hold it by the way. For two reasons. For two reasons. You're, you're going to go upstairs and your wife's going to think you were at a strip club because you're covered oh, yeah, in glitter. I got glitter. the glitter. I got the yeah, yeah. And, uh, and two, because that's, that is a collector's item. Yeah, so tell, so I've got some other fun ones. Like I just went over this little collectible thing. Oh, so like I yeah, got this I forgot thing. about that one. <laughs> so, so, you got, <laughs> so you got like the Ninja Turtle. Like that was kind of tough for the hookup rate. So instead on this one, they're like, forget the hookup rate. We're just going to add another hook. Oh my God. So we got this, oh this hook down the middle of the pants of that frog. Oh my God. And then you got your normal frog hooks. Um, one that I'll tell you, like, you know, I'm friends uh, working with Molex. There's these frogs, so they have a super NATO frog. This isn't it, but they're super NATO. Wait, that one is has, uh, that's yeah. This that's, is it's. I don't know who's this one is. But I this do. Is not the mullet. Okay, so I come do. on, tell me. You, you know your stuff. You put this. I in do. Boxes. That's a Blitz Buzz Frog. That is okay, so, Jeremy Francis's favorite frog on the planet, hands down. I'm telling you. Whopper plopper style. So that's the mullet super NATO, Carl mm -hmm. Jackson. When you have a frog that you can throw in real like a whopper plopper and it can get through any amount of cover, that that's fascinating of helping you catch fish. It's providing the action. You literally can throw it and you can reel it. It can become one of those brainless things of frog fishing. It's so hard to make sure it's working just right. Throw it, retrieve it, and you're fine. No, I, I have some fun ones. I mean, I think that the topic is is like when you're talking about big frogs with the, the popper face. So what when you're i know you're in the middle can we talk about your frog journey because i think sure. you're trying to trying. create a frog mm -hmm. you're trying i can so show you the designs you trying, right now 
Are you trying to create a popping frog or a walking frog? Pointy nose, concave nose. What do you got? Uh, sadly, I'm trying to do both and hope that I okay, get one well, right. All right. Well, that's uh, fair. And I think popping has its place. Walking has its place. Sure. And I'm a fan. I'm a fan of both. I prefer yeah. a walking frog. Yeah. And I prefer a popper as a hard popper. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to pop something, that's, that's my, what, I mean, for whatever it's worth, it doesn't even matter. That's this whole thing of like, it's all opinion based and it's not even probably because I catch more fish on a walking frog. I just think the way it comes through the cover nicely when I'm using a frog and need that technique, yeah. that's the frog I go to. So. Yeah, the challenge with designing the frog is like, and, and I guess we don't want to get too far down the path of this, but is making sure that the the angle on the belly is, is, is enough so that it walks super easy without it tipping to the side. And because you can have a flat one, but the, the like Z-Man, I think, does a really good job of the angles on their frog. I don't necessarily love the frog, but I think the angles are really tight. And, 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 uh... And then there's the whole thing with the, the tail. Like, how long do you want the tail to be? Like, I, I'm pretty sure I received samples, and there must have been 25, 20, 25 different lengths. Some, right. like, and, and, you know, I don't know what the right answer is because half of you guys are going to cut it down and, and make it your own, but, like, that's a yeah, whole I would, I would, Yeah, I would advise making them. I mean, when you turn a frog over and making them a little longer than the length of the frog just to come out of the package, you have a nice long tail, then you can trim them. Some guys trim them at an angle. Some guys make them offset to where they're not symmetrical, and that helps walk different things. Um, talking about the shape, I wanted to bring this up today. because this is this, this is your bait. Pretty good. Yeah. So. Having that hydrodynamic movement on the back end that looks like that. And most people, they see baits and you're like, what's going on? And so in the mindset of having this thing walk, the frog has a lot to do. And I started to go diving deep into the frog science is how deep this sits in the water. The reason being like this versus a frog, the retrieve of this bait, if the water moves across this surface and you can just hold your hand, if it moves over, that pushes that bait up in the air. And that's the distinct difference of this bait versus one that's crowned evenly on both sides. Mm -hmm. So this bait walks, it raises and it splashes different. It sits yeah. different in the water and it makes different movement coming back and you can bounce it, you can move it, you can jerk it differently. So I think when people start looking at that and understanding baits are designed specifically to accomplish different movements, that's the key with understanding like what is a fish just because that Patriot bounces in the air, maybe if you twitch it a little softer, it its movement is a little less or it's more dynamic. So that's when you start to figure out like, why is it working? Why is it not working some days? Do they suck? They want to see something that's smoothly moving through the water. Do they want to see something that's going up and down, splashing on top of the water? That's when you get really crazy with top water yeah. in your designs. But frogs, I don't know how to lead you in the right direction. I mean, it's, it's one of these things that we talk about. Like, why is this? Why is the Spro brand? I think that's the question is why did that become cool? Somebody at some point, you probably track it back to like, was it tactical bass? And did they say that bait probably, was good? And if they, probably. if they, if they caught a bunch of fish on it and they got their millions mm. of followers, they're like instantly it's christened as cool. And then people yeah. are going to say that's the best. And then you got Arthur in the chat telling me that scum frog is the best. Arthur, then call me up and like, let's talk about it. I want to hear why scum frog is best. Cause they also have really unique shapes. Like, I mean, they make theirs look like a camel on top. Not that it really matters because it's not like the uh. fish can see it, but I'd love to know. Maybe you think it's the way that the, fi the frog compresses. I don't know. Do we have someone on the line right now? I feel like we do fix. Let's take this call. I want to see what the heck they have to say about this. Take the second one first. The second one first. We got like 18 people on the line. I'm just kidding. Go ahead, caller. Tell, surprise me. So, overrated baits, right? Sure. Yeah. Your basic everyday frog, you're not getting the motion that you want with it. The best thing I have found to do, if they're just not hitting that, is getting a package of like the 50 cent one inch round clear suction cups like you put on a mirror to put like a little hook on. Clip off the tab on the back, poke it over the ring of the hook, and rock that across. It will move better, pop better, and you can still pull it over cover without it sinking under your lily pads and stuff. Because it actually flexes and lifts it up. It's great. 
Plus, you can be able to tilt it and be able to make it skip or jump if you wanted to. I got to tell you, we're sitting so, here talking about if top water is overrated, and here I am, I being a visual guy, and I can't see what you're doing. I can't, I can't picture what you're, what you're, what you're saying. So you, yeah, I've you, got the suction so, cup. Are you cutting? You're cutting the tab of the suction cup, and then are you putting it underneath by the frog hooks on the bottom of it? Is that what you said? No, 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 no. no. So the single ring where you tie on it, you clip that, and you poke a small hole just big enough to push that ring through, and then you tie right. onto the underside of the suction cup that would actually be pressed up against something you tie on there and then you just start popping that across yeah so you're making a he's just making he's adding a perfect popper on the front of this frog Mm. the perfect right so if you take the but if you take (laughs) you take the you take the popping frog though and you take the same thing and instead of put it right through the center of it you move it to the top one third of it it becomes that skipping frog Mm. where it jumps across top of the water yeah i'm with you Modify bait, bait modification. I like it. So, so, so same colors, only you know, I'm out fifty cents instead of another seven bucks. Will you do me a favor? Will you take a picture of what you're talking about and uh and 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 send it to me? Absolutely. I got a few of them rigged up on the boat. I'm on my way home now, so Yeah, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. You know how to get a hold so of before- me? Yeah. Yeah, sure right. thing. I, yeah. I got you on email. Amazing. Thank you. All right. Before you go, yep. would you no, rather right. catch uh-huh. would you rather catch a three pound fish Carolina rig or a seven I'm sorry, a seven pound fish Carolina rig or a three pound top water? I'm going seven pounds all day. I mean I, <laughs> I want twenty five pound bags every time I go to a tournament. Sorry. Yeah. Seven pound yeah. all day. day. <laughs> tournament angler. See, I'm telling you, tournament angler. That's you can the, call back anytime. Right. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Yeah. If you had said, if you had said, I'd rather catch a two pound bass on top water, I would have been like, hang no, up on this guy. I, what are we I talking about? I gave him four. I said uh, maybe three, maybe four pounds. All right. Well, I, I think he's got, he's got I, I, I mean, it, I, I want to be catching five plus every yeah. time I, you know, pull something in the boat. Otherwise it's like, eh, I, I need I, I, 20 plus bags. So, you, you know, seven pounder do me right. Five pounder do me right. Two pounder. It's here. fun. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, it's getting cold. It's getting cold in 30 seconds. So yeah, totally. Totally. I appreciate you calling in, man. No worries. Thanks guys. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Who we got top next? Water's over, top water, wait, wait, wait. Oh. top water is overrated to him. He, so I want to make sure that that's fighting words for people. He was the guy that the fish size is more important. Yeah. He's a tournament angler. That is the difference of the mindset is when I'm out fishing in a tournament, I don't care what I, we go back to that drop shot discussion. I will do anything it takes to put the right fish in the boat during. Yeah. The when I'm when I'm For fun sure. fishing, fun fishing, complete different story. I try to make fishing as hard as I can for myself. I go out with like I brought this over. I I have not thrown this yet, so I have Wait, this big. So it's a river to see. It's a spook I have, and it's ridiculously oh, awesome. Man. And I'm I want to catch big a is bass. That? Uh, nine inches. Oh my <laughs> so, god. So I'm gonna catch a fish. I'm gonna catch a bass on that, just because that is not normal. That will not be that easy. I'm gonna size up the type of bite that I'm looking for. I mean, this, this is there's nothing. I brought a few just for fun. PB rat. The G- oh, the PB rat. Who makes so that? So the PB rat three. It's P. It's so it's PB rat is the brand. They're a couple hundred bucks, like two hundred fifty dollars. Oh, what? They, wait, they a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Two hundred fifty. No, bucks. it's. No, hand, we so could have a whole made, episode on that, and I would uh, no no one could convince me that two hundred bucks is worth it. Well, the difference is, is you know the person that puts it together, the manufacturing, the pouring the resin, the building the bait. That in in today's society, it's worth the dollar value. Can you buy something that works that's similar for about forty? Sure, but if you know the person, you're invested in that brand. Same thing. Discussion we had with UFO baits. Is there a swim bait out there worth three, four, three, four, five, six hundred dollars? It's worth it. It's oh you're fishing God. with a piece of art. But in your world, again, there, there's no reason you need that. It's the fun to accomplish it. That's the fun, the enjoyment, the connection. Ugh. I'd to be so bait. worried I'd have to jump in the water. I'd be like, what am I wearing today when I go fishing? Because I'm going to throw that thing. I'm either climbing a tree. Or I'm dumping myself into the water to get it because there's no way I'm coming home without it. So John's baits are fifty dollars. The Donkey Slayer. Yeah. I threw yeah. one in the tournament right next to a dock. Perfect spot. Big fish should be there. 
fish slashed out, grabbed it, turned, went under the dock, immediately broke my line right at the dock. I almost, I was so mad. And here I have, it's like $50 for a bait that I get from my friend. And I, it's just like, I was just sick. I was just, sat, I sat there for like five minutes in a tournament thinking, that's ridiculous. Uh, so I've not personally, yeah, I've never that, lost. That one's, that's borderline. That's the one where you're like, eh, yeah. I don't think I'm jumping in for 50 bucks. Like, no, I was, okay. but the fish was gone and the fish will go down and it'll shake it off. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, for Here's sure. the deal. If I lose a $350 bait oh. or $250 bait, I think I might cry. I'm, I'm just sitting out there. <laughs> like maybe if somebody's lost, I want to know, has anybody lost a bait that's over $200? Like Colin, I want to, I want to first give you a hug, but I'd like yeah, to hear the yeah. story. I don't want to give you a hug, but I do want to take this next call. Let's see who we got. Go ahead, caller. Is top water overrated? Some of it. Some Especially ninety percent of, <laughs> of the no. frogs on the market. Okay. Yeah, that's my no. boy. Let's do, let's do this. I want to hear this. Ninety percent of the frogs out there are just a terrible design. Terrible. Terrible design. Except for two. <laughs> One being. Christmas party gone wrong, which is a collector's item. You can't find it anywhere. And yeah. your favorite frog on the yeah. planet, which is and why? So, correction to Ooh. your comment. Blitz Lures does have my favorite frog. It is not the buzz frog. It is the popping frog. Oh. It's the popping version, which you, which you did have in the box. But it's been like four or five years ago. Okay, um, because I just bought some of those yeah, to put in the box, so I hope I didn't buy the wrong ones. Shoot. Uh, either way, okay. I mean, it's, it's not that the buzz frog is bad. It just has a, a different place than the popping version. But I'll give you my top three. Yeah. Uh, top, uh, maybe not top three. I'll give you three frogs to consider. And okay? which? And, and one that's overrated. Uh, and I'm pretty passionate about this. Okay, one that's overrated. Couldn't agree more with you on the on the on the spro bronze eye like totally overrated like if you have to take a frog and put it in boiling water to soften it up just throw it away like you're you're, you're wasting your money they need to do that for you right i'm with you just boil them all before you package them do us a favor like if if you have to boil a frog or bend the hooks or cut the tail like why like just go buy one you don't have to do all that crap like it's like that, that's, that's to me where 90% are overrated. But one thing people don't really ever talk about in the frog world is the actual body construction of the frog and all the details and especially the keel, the bottom. Okay. And, you know, there's a reason why our boats are made the way they are, or even kayaks are made with a keel. is so you can turn, right? So you can turn. However, most frogs don't have a keel under them. They're just a straight U curve. And then you wonder why you can't walk it very good or et cetera. It's because there's no design to it, right? So if you have a frog that has a keel to it and you're wanting it to walk, it will walk like a dream if, if it's designed the right way. So so three frogs to consider. Okay. One is, yes, the blitz or popping frog. I, I make zero dollars if you go buy one. I don't it's have true. a link. Yada, yada, yada. It's just a great frog. Like hands down. It will improve your hookup ratio because of the way it's made, the design, the curvature on the top, the keel on the bottom. You don't need to cut the, you know, bend the hooks. You don't need to cut the skirt. You don't need to pull the frog, all the other kind of garbage. You don't need to do that. Um, another one that's great is the, uh, is the pop and perch by Strike King. Now, I will tell you, it, it has better quality components than the blood sewer frog. It is also more expensive. Um, but is also one you fish and take her out of the package. The only caveat to the, to the striking pop and perch is some of the colors are a harder material. Other colors are a softer material. So again, through trial and tribulation of purchasing and, you know, maybe spending some money that I wasted and others that was like, okay, this is great. You just have to kind of know which colors are softer than others. Um, so the, the just the, the basic white frog though for the blue sewer white frog, the pop and perch white, white frog can go wrong. You really can. Um, the third one so, and, yeah, so and Jeremy, this is a plug. Jeremy, yeah, Jeremy, I don't want okay. to stop you too much, but pop and perch versus a popping frog. Do you think the fish see a perch? 
I just because I, I I'm I'm teasing, but I'm not. Here's the deal: is I believe in the popping perch, no. and I believe it works great as a popping bait. I think, and some and it was in the comments. Somebody said so, like, oh, he gets stuck on this idea that frogs have to be fished in grass. Popping baits, frog baits, walking baits work everywhere. It's just that a frog can get Correct. through grass. Do you think that the Correct. perch idea has anything to do with it over a frog that you like that's a similar color? Or is it the shape no. of that perch? Okay, I'm with you. Keep it's going. Just, I'm, it's I, just something up. It, yeah, it's just, yeah, no, not at all. I got, and, no, and, you, and that's you, why yeah, I, you, I, I use it in the frog category. But. Yeah, you hit the keel, and I think this that's something to. Th- when you're considering, I don't want to get scientific because it turns the whole idea like it's, oh, what are we talking about? The keel keeps things to go straight. And mm-hmm. that's why you have a keel on a boat. It holds the trajectory. What the reason you have to have a keel is when you have a rounded surface, when you pull it straight and it deflects off a of water or a wake or a bump or anything, it turns one way. Now, You pull it with your line and the tension pulls it back the exact opposite direction. That keel is what gets it to deflect right, left, right, left. If it's rounded, it just smoothly slides back straight. So that's, you're dead on with the keel to, it's fighting the resistance of the line in opposites. So that's super important to understand. Yeah, you'll get sharper, you'll get sharper sharper, turns. Sharper turns. Yeah. Yeah. No, and and it holds a straighter line longer. Yeah, so what what I like about those first, yeah, what I like about those first two as well is like with the very slight twitches, you could almost just keep the frog in the same place, mm. right? So, you know, you, you could take a four inch by four inch box and you could work that frog almost back and forth four or five times before it exits a small little diameter. You know, so if you're if you're fishing around grass or you find a hole in the grass or you find a hole in a, in a group of lily pads, like that's where you want a bait that is you can walk like briskly, quickly, like sharply in the same area without exiting the striking zone, if you will. Um, so it's not that other frogs won't walk. It's just that sometimes they walk, but they're covering three to four inches in between each walk, and it makes it less effective in terms of fishing certain areas or pockets of grass, love pads, et cetera. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, but, but whether it's a, a rat, a frog, a perch, I think the idea is that there's something moving up there, just like a buzz bait. There's something up there moving. They're going to go attack it because they want to explore it. They don't have hands, so they got to go explore it with their mouth. Um, and that, that, and they the might even just be, fact, they might most of the time, be mad. Totally, yeah. And I think most of the time, bass actually think that what we call, quote-unquote, a frog is actually a bluegill like actually or a shad. like. Like I, I think they're attacking it more for that reason, not because they're like, "Oh, that's a frog up there swimming around." I I, I, I actually think less about the frog notion. Um, yeah, so, frog. When you watch um, a frog in a pond, point, if you yeah, go, go, I was gonna say watching a frog in a pond, they just sit there. It just floats, and its legs are out to the sides, and that's the reality of what a frog does in nature. Or it swims down to the bottom, and so you might be better with a soft body that's frog right. that's down on the bottom doing a Texas rig or something. But it it, it the bass doesn't right. care if it's a duck. Yep. They don't care if it's a muskrat. They don't care if it's actually a rabbit swimming across the water. They're gonna eat whatever or go up and try to investigate with their mouth. So you're spot on. I'll be honest. Rick, the, just so you know, just yeah. you know Jeremy, oh, I, want, I want Jeremy to know Rick is over like a little kid in the corner while you're talking about our frogs. He's got a knife and he's butchered a frog that's coming in the box. <laughs> so I did. Want to see, I want to, Rick, tell us because Jeremy has got another point he wants to make. But so what did you find on your, were you looking well, for let me get to the third one? All right, go, yeah, yeah, keep going, Jeremy. Let me get to the third one. Keep in mind right now, I can't see. I'm on my phone. That's usually how I watch the show. So I can't see <laughs> that's, you guys. That's why I love um, explaining. And it. when I call in, and when you call in, just so you guys know too, like now it, there's like opera music playing, not the show playing. So I'm, this opera may have already music. been covered. So forgive me if it has. Well, find another service. <laughs> just, I don't want my listeners listening to opera music. All right. Sorry, Jeremy. Go ahead. Just, not that it's bad. I'm just not a big fan of the opera. No, it's um, bad. It's fine. <laughs> Call for what it is. I'm going to the opera next week. All right. So this weekend I was fishing a lake, a lot of lily pads. And I thought, you know what? Um, we got this new snake frog, snake frog, whatever it may be called, the monster bass box. I, I, no offense, Rick, but I'm usually kind of more of a critic before I am a fan of anything that's new. I want to go try it, see it, you know, 
figure out if it's actually worth yeah, sharing sure. and me telling people about or not. Um, That's why I so like you. I took I took the the frog from Snakehead Custom Lures. Um, I know they make very high quality stuff in the past, like from the Cobra to spinner bait, things like that, that you put in the box. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I thought, okay, well, they've, they've done good stuff in the past. I'm a big critic of frogs, if okay. you can't tell already. Um, so let me go try this one out, throwing it around some of the thickest of lily pads, a lot of hydraulic grass, things okay. like that. A um, couple of things about this frog, just for anyone who's you know going to get it and going to use it. One is I was, I was really uh, intrigued by the by the blades on the back they make a really cool sound coming through the water uh you can actually just steady retrieve it almost like a buzz bait and it works extremely well it doesn't roll it doesn't turn over it actually is pretty cool so i was using it almost like a buzz bait in Mm. a place that you wouldn't be able to throw a normal buzz bait um pretty cool also if bass are keyed in on smaller uh, you know, smaller bait, like they, like, so this weekend, bass were eating like a, I mean, bait that was smaller than an inch. Those little willow blades on the back mimic that. Um, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> I was throwing it in some of the thickest of reeds and cattails and things like that, and it would not get hung up. Really? I mean, I, not once did I have to reposition my boat to go get it. Um, mm-hmm. Super soft, love the hook design, Love the way the line tie is. There's a swivel even on front of the Kevlar line tie. Mm-hmm. There's a swivel in the back where the blades are. The the all the glue that's on the bottom of it. I'll just simply say like that that is that is a home run bait. I, I actually think they're charging two two little dollars for Ooh. that bait um, altogether. Um, it, it's a better value than what I think they know, and that's a great addition to this month's box. So for what it's worth. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll say that wow. uh, that one was a home run. All right, let me ask you this, Jeremy. Let me ask you this. The, the line tie, I'm showing it on the screen. So tell me what you think this adds to the to, to the bait in terms of movement or or whatnot because I'm, at, I'm literally, when I tell you this, I'm working with the exact same factory as these guys. And, you know, okay. they were kind enough to introduce me because – you know, everything about this looks to me like it's it's quality. Like, I love the fact that they glued the hole at the bottom so that you're not getting, you're not taking mm-hmm. on water right away. It's got a blow hole in the back, it, right? Like, so I don't know if you can see this on camera because it's, you know, the color, but it's fine, Fixie. It's, you know, and, and right down to the quality of the swivels and, and everything else, it looked to me like right from the get-go, great. And then I threw it in the pool and I thought, all right, this is great. But what I don't know is, like, this line, what do you think that that adds to 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 the to the experience? Just the swaying back and forth. I think it gives you. I, I think I think there's two there's two main thoughts I had is kind of one what's what's an addition, but one what is not a subtraction. Mm-hmm. If that if that makes sense. Sure. So, so I know that's a double negative, but the first one I think what it gives you is it like when you when you do go to walk the bait. That little bit of line tie, it's almost like tying a loop knot in front of mm-hmm. your walking bait. And, and I don't know if Chris is on his head right now, but he knows this. Like if you tie a, you know, a direct line tie to your, your uh, you know, the, the eye of a spook, it's not, you're going to lose a little bit of the walking momentum than if you were to tie a loop knot in front of that spook because now you've got a little bit more wiggle room for the bait to work back and forth because of just the design of the line tie. What I, what I believe, and I don't know, I never, I never talked to the guys at Snakehead Custom Lures. I believe what they're trying to do is to create almost that loop knot type experience with the Kevlar line tie um, that, that gives the bait a little bit more wiggle room to walk when you're throwing a line on braid that does not have wiggle room at all. Like that, you know, normally braid does not, you know, it's, it's, it, it's not meant to stretch. It's not meant to be forgiving. It's meant to drive in, you know, big hooks, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but, but what they did to offset, I think the Kevlar is they added a swivel to tie onto the Kevlar, which is then attached to the lure. So then it also, if you are going to reel it straight, instead of the lure turning and spinning or particularly turning over, especially going through pads. And I was, I was drawing it over the thickest of pads. Mm. It will not turn or roll over because that swivel keeps your line turning instead of the lure turning. So it's actually a pretty, pretty cool design. And what you don't lose I personally don't think you lose because that was my concern. Am I going to lose 
the the hookup ratio not being tied directly to it. I think being that it's Kevlar, you got two big hooks. I don't see that being an issue in terms of not being able to drive the hooks in. Okay. All right. So, hey, I'll uh, tell you, Rick. Yeah, I was going to say, can well, I answer the reason they have that? Wait, well, hold that thought before you before you go to that. I've got a very special guest. I'd like to introduce our CFO and the person that makes all things possible. Yeah. There, all right. Yeah. We've got Rochelle. Rochelle, how you doing? Good. You can move forward and talk right into the microphone. Oh, it's really Rochelle, easy. No, because, yeah, I, I, I've, Good. I've talked to. All right, so this is Rochelle. Rochelle. Rochelle runs finance, and quite honestly, if if unless you were to duct tape me to a wheelchair and push me in the pool, that would be the only reason this company doesn't run because she does so much for us, and I just want to say thank you for, uh, on the air for everything that you do for me and for the company. We love you very much. Thanks, Rochelle. She's I get to so meet mad Rochelle. at me right I now. Look at her. That's all right. She's mad at me. Rochelle. Yeah, yeah. Rochelle. No, no, no. Rochelle, it, Rochelle, it's, no just Rochelle. Like, it's just like being on the, on the runway of New York. Yeah, same deal. That was miserable. Well, yeah, but for a period of time, you probably liked it. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Do you want to come back on the air? I'm done. Okay. All right. Thanks, Rochelle. All right, put her on one more time just so we can say bye to Rochelle. <laughs> bye, Rochelle. Bye, Rochelle. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Okay, thanks oh, for amusing yeah. me. Okay, go ahead, Chris. Now answer the question. You're dead. You're dead. No, I was going to say that that is designed by a company that works specifically with snakehead baits a lot. And that mm -hmm. Kevlar is yeah. when a yeah. when a snakehead bites it, they have such aggressive teeth. Instead of them cutting your braid or your line, that gives you a chance to land them. The swivel also is really important because when you catch a snake, the snakehead, if you haven't done it, if you catch a catfish, you might be able to relate to that. They do spin when you get them on your line and that's the way that they try to get off. Once you get them in a net, they're doing the same thing. So the swivel is kind of necessary on those. I'm with you as I, with fish and alone star. I didn't know, is this going to slow down the retrieve twitch because it basically elongates the length of that frog. If you, it'd be really cool to be able to test it with a loop right at the nose and then also test it when you have that little piece of Kevlar rope on it, because adding a half an inch length to your frog, mm, you're yeah. now, you're changing the length of that frog's walking. And so by having a shorter frog, it might pivot back and forth a little quicker. I don't think it's going to really matter. Um, at certain times, it might change the I bite did, a tiny I bit. I didn't notice a difference. Yeah. Yeah, if it's, if it's working, yeah, it's I working. I don't Because you also... Yeah, because you also don't have the legs on the yeah, back of a normal frog. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, mean, I think, if, I think like it a almost fish ends up being about the same length as normal. Right. You got this bait that's going to twitch. It's going to rip. It's going to bounce. You got metal things hanging off it. You got a little piece of rope in the front. People are like, oh, that's going to deter a strike. It's like a fish is swimming up eating two pieces of metal that doesn't really look even like a frog at all. The fish is going to come up because it's something making a ton of noise and probably evasive bait fish. Yeah. Like you're saying, they're a little shad or some kind of small fish swimming along the surface. That fish has made a decision in a millisecond timing to come up. If it's super clear, they might get a chance to see it and deter. But if you're moving it, they're not getting a clean look at it because of all the water splashing around. So I think it's a cool looking frog. Yeah. Yeah. Good job and, and it does make a little bit of a clanking sound too uh, yeah. when you're just on a straight retrieve. So, or even, even when you're twitching a straight retrieve, et cetera. So I actually thought it was a, a really unique ad. I've had, I posted about it earlier on Instagram. I've had several people reach out and ask more details. Uh, about awesome. it and uh you know kind of message me privately so it's pretty cool uh, i i like it great ad so what i need an answer from you four let's go five pounds top water seven pounds carolina which one are you taking like in terms of line size no no just in, when what do you what, prefer what do you to catch We're we're talking top water being overrated. So oh, oh, would, you oh, rather, sorry, sorry. would you rather sorry. catch a fish top water that's smaller or would oh, you? Oh, I got gotcha. you. You know, this is this whole thing. So I'm trying to give you a breaking point. Like what's your breaking point? Is top water that much more important to you? Is how you catch a fish being on the top water the most important thing to you? I mean, if we went between five and seven pounds, I would take the top water five pounder over a seven pounder Carolina rig. Okay, so um, that, I got your breaking yeah, point. Now if, back, back it down to four pounds. I think I would still take the four pounder top water. <laughs> so top water is not overrated. It, it's, like just, it. it's just it's just more 
it's more exhilarating. Like you can interact more with the catch, you know, but, but let me, okay. All right, Chris, you, 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 you asked the question. I'm going to give you an answer you didn't expect. I mean, for those guys that like, as I made the comment, you can interact with the fish. You can see the catch being top water, et cetera. You got to keep in mind, I'm a guy that doesn't, you know, uh, what's the, what's the word I want to use here? I'm the guy, I'll just, I'll just be very PC. I'm the guy that doesn't use forward facing sonar. So for the yeah, guy but, that wants to but, use, wait, 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 you lose. You and use. Hold on, let me finish the sentence. Let me you, finish the sentence. You let me finish the sentence. Let me finish, sentence. Now. Let me finish right. the sentence. Let me finish this. You asked the question. Let me finish. If you see the bike coming and you're the guy that likes that via forward facing sonar, then it's then you you don't have the appeal to top water as a guy who's not using forward facing sonar. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get you. I appreciate that. I. I think I saw a post where you have live three. You have live three sixty now, and you're spying on fish in live time. You're getting to see where you're casting. You're getting to see the shadows. So, I mean, it's all about catching fish to me. It's like get out there, Not catch correct. fish. That is that is that is incorrect. That's an incorrect okay. statement. So, Chris, that's an incorrect statement. Three sixty is not live. It's not live okay. at all. It's uh, you watch so, your you're so it's, you're within it's the same you're within a couple seconds. We're going to discuss that on a future uh, show. Well, but but that's totally not even close to what four facing sonar is. Not even not even close. If it was, there wouldn't have been a need for four facing sonar when three sixty came out. But that's you're right. That's a whole other show. <laughs> <laughs> it's an improvement. You, you see where we went? I love it. So did you guys? Jeremy now has three sixty on his boat, and he sees the fish all around him, but he's okay Man. with it because. It's Wait a, a few seconds delay. Yeah. Are you telling me that while I was gone and apologizing to Rochelle for putting her online, that Jeremy went and put forward facing sonar no, 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 on his no. boat? No, no, it's not forward nope. facing sonar. 360. It's 360 degrees. So sonar he's only partly delay. cheating. He's not <laughs> cheating all the way. He's just going to cheat some of the way. So instead of catching it's, the. It's not it's, live. You can't see the fish eating your lure. It's not even close mm. to forward facing sonar. And if anyone mm. says it is, mm. I want to see oh. your IQ score because I'm mm. highly concerned about it. Mm. I love it. See, this you is play- where it's fun because, yeah. yeah. hey, 360 sonar. I got to learn all about sonar. This is the fun of being connected to breast cancer research and ultrasounds and really cool things. That sonar relation of 360, when they can track multiple beams of 360, they're, be, they're going to be able to, it's called stitching the information together. They're just going to mm-hmm. stitch the 360 information yeah. that's overlapping and you're going to have live 360. And that's just the reality of what's coming. But I'm glad you're using that old fashioned stuff. So that keeps you true, <laughs> true to your stance. <laughs> Stick with that. I want to know later. I mean, we'll if talk if, if you really want to know all I've ever, the stance I've ever taken is just be honest with what you're using. Don't tell people that that's your true. jerk bait that's is true. the best jerk bait ever when you're when you're using forward facing sonar. So, I like it. Hey, we we appreciate that about <laughs> you. Just be <laughs> honest. Is it so wrong to be honest? I like it. Dude, that's he's why not, we love you. Yeah, he's not yeah, wrong. Don't not, don't don't tell people you've got the best two and a half inch minnow ever. When in reality, it's forward facing sonar that helps you catch the fish, not your little two inch minnow. So. All right. So <laughs> just 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 in in in. I have to ask then. So if I, if people say, Hey, you have a really amazing smile. Am I supposed to say, thanks. I, I used Invisalign. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. No, say, but, but, but totally. should I be required to do that in, in all, in all transparency? No, yeah. but also don't say that it's your toothbrush. That's amazing. That gave you the great smile. Like, let's just be real. Like, that's all I'm saying. Just be real. Like, right. I, I, I'm not saying you have to disclose anything. What I'm saying mm. is, don't go tell someone it's because of something else. Mm. Just, just like Rick, Rick, like I've never shied away from the fact that I go fish private lakes at times. No, you have not. I, I, I see it all the time. Three days. Yep. Went to, I went to a public lake two days, went to a private lake one day. I caught 40 fish at a public lake, caught 10 at a private lake. Okay. But I'm still going to tell you no matter where I'm fishing, what type of lake I'm on. I'll even tell you what lake I'm on. Most people won't tell you that. Um, right. I'll, I'll tell you. So if I'm fishing private water, I'll tell you to fish in private water because I don't want to mislead you to think that you can go catch the same fish that I just caught when I'm at a private lake that you don't have access to. 
I would be misleading you. Yeah. Right? Now, people have their own moral compasses. People can go do what they want to. I'm just simply saying, like, for me, if I'm trying to help people go fish, why would I tell you that you can go catch all these fish at a private lake when you actually can't? Like, so why would I tell you well, that this jerk bait's the best jerk bait ever when you actually wouldn't be catching those fish if it wasn't for four bait and sonar? All I'm saying is just disclosure. Just disclose the truth so people know, you know, where they can go catch fish or not. And here's the last comment I'll make on it. Okay. The reason why <laughs> is because when I was brand new, when I was brand new starting out fishing, right? Yeah. I was, I almost quit. I almost quit. And the reason why is because I was so frustrated that other people were catching like all these big, amazing fish that I wasn't. And it was, it was also because the people that were catching those fish weren't giving the mm. whole truth as to what they were doing. Fair enough. And, and so yeah. once I knew the whole truth, I'm like, Oh, well that makes sense why you're catching those fish because you're watching them live react to your lure. Totally different than what I'm doing. So I'm just saying, I, I, I think it matters. Everyone can use their own moral compass. At the same time, people can go fish with live shiners for all I care. Like, just just don't don't tell people you're fishing with an artificial lure if you're doing it. Fair enough. That's not too sad. <laughs> not with Jess, where they want to call them. So I apologize. Yep. <laughs> and once again, before we go, I, I want to say thank you again for helping us get uh, Grande Bass into Shields. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Oh, for sure. Hey, love seeing two great companies come together like that. That's awesome. You're the best. Love it. Wake me. Love it. Thank All you. right. I'll let you guys get back on topic because I took you way off. I'm sorry. No, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. See you, man. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, if, if you're just tuning in now, we've been uh, we've been having discussions about topwater and whether it's overrated or not. And uh, and uh, I think we all agree that uh, topwater is overrated. Uh, everyone in the chat agree. Everyone in the chat agrees with me. Um, we would much no, rather don't, catch don't. bigger fish on Carolina rigs than you. small little no. dinky rinks on top water. It's my show, and that's I'm standing by it. So uh, do me a favor right now. Give me the, hit the hit the thumbs up button because only 14 people have. And uh, yeah. and uh, if you disagree with what I'm saying, then call in and. Prove me wrong. Let's see what this next caller has to say. I, I doubt he's going to be able to prove me wrong. So let's see. let's let's give it a, let's give it a go. Go ahead, caller. Prove me wrong. Top water fishing's overrated. Oh come on, Rick. All right, hang up. There's nothing better than a top water bite. Can you hear me? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> oh well, oh. I figured not. We hear you just <laughs> fine. I mean, I, I I'm sitting there going. How can you say top water is overrated? There's nothing funner than flipping. I don't care if it's, I don't we, care what it is on the top. Would it, you, seeing would that you, big blow up and seeing that fish come out of the okay. water. Okay. Would you rather so catch a double digit fish on a Carolina rig or a four pound bass on top water? Liar. Oh, come on. Well, I, what would you rather no, that, do? That's a, okay, fine. I'll, I'll make it, I'll, I'll make it easier digit, for you. I'll make right? it, I'll make it easier for you. A nine pound bass on a Carolina rig or a four pound bass on top water. Get them close. You got to get them closer. I mean, go, I go, four, really catch four, nine. Go, go four and six. Cause six, like, come on, if you're in an area where you're catching big fish, so it depends on where you're at. Cause six is huge. Up yeah. There. I mean, if I'm but, catching it, I where, mean, if where, it depends on, on the lake that I'm at, it, if the average fish is above average at three and a half, heck yeah. I'm okay. going to go okay. throw a top water and, and just crush them all day long. I think here's the real question. If you're going to catch a four pound bass Carolina rig or catch a four pound bass, it doesn't have to be Carolina. If you're going to catch a four pound bass top water versus catching a fish under the water. Four pounds, same fish, but any technique underwater versus any technique top water, which do you choose? And I, I'm, I'm going to go top water all day. Yeah, yeah, that's nothing's better than, and I, usually for me, it's, it's an evening bite. And I like to take my boat out, you know, about right now and go fish till dark and chase fish blowing up on shad. That's all I do. And nothing's better than taking, you know, a spook or a frog, whatever. You can throw pretty much anything at that point in time. It's, it's a it's a light thing. And if you can get that fish in that attack mode, again, where you were talking about where he feels safe that predators can't see him, but he can still see up to the top of the water, that bite is, is vicious and 
and nothing's funner than funner. sitting there just flipping along and all of a sudden something funner. blows up on your face. Hold on, hold on. I got I to gotta stop the show for a second. Yeah. Chris is leading the witness here, and I, I'm not having it. A four-pound fish on a Carolina rig versus a four-pound fish on topwater? It's like it's not a real question because that's yeah, like that's asking. No, that's like asking, would you rather hit the game-winning shot in a game that doesn't matter or a game-winning shot in the no. championship game or no, in front like of a crowd you, no, or, no, or no, not no, in front no, of a No, 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 no. Game winner. This is the perfect way. Segway. Game winner, layup, uncontested, or game winner, Michael Jordan style, somebody in your face, three-pointer, game winner. So same deal. You make the same shot, two points, four pounds, which would you rather do? Top water or underwater? He's going top water. Yeah. That's well, that's why. I've been I've been watching the chat, right? And and look, I'm I'm no one to talk because my top uh my top top water bait is the uh the lunker hunt hollow skitter lizard. Whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> now we're no longer doing business with Lunker Hunt. Good job. Ryan. No, I said they were my favorite. Oh, okay. <laughs> But uh, it's look I mean, top top water top water, 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 top water really is a what you're doing. It's fun. top water is a commitment right top water is early morning top water is late at night top water is seasonal right? the weather the sun everything has to be like really specific and what I also get is that top water when you don't catch anything is a lot of time and a lot of energy wasted right and so to add Very like, true. to me. I don't care what I'm doing as long as I catch fish. One of the reasons why it's it's taking me such a long time to fish with uh, T-Rex and then with Jeremy Hickman, which I'm going to make a trip out there to fish with him, is because I don't catch anything. I honestly don't care if I put my hand out and catch yes. a fish. I'd be so excited, right? To me, the reward True. is is the actual fish. And True. so why would why not start me... Uh, with a technique oh, it, that's I'd easy for me to it. learn that I can get a feel for and that I can catch fish all day rather than trying to make it that much more difficult and like, you know, just throw in three pointers or, or whatever it is. Like, I feel like top water is definitely overrated. And maybe if people like to challenge themselves then OK, I'm going to get a little bit of splashy mm. at the at the surface. But uh, the fish is going to breach when you bring it into the boat or the bank anyway. Like, just flip it around a little bit. Arthur Bland uh, so, just said, "Top water is like the McRib. You need to take advantage when the opportunity when you can. It's that. It's that once in a that actually makes thing. a lot of sense. No, by the way, I'm telling you because top water. Yeah, that's great. You said it perfect. You can't always catch fish top water. The middle of winter when the fish are down 25 feet, calling them up to 25 feet to the surface is tough. I I related. I don't want to get way off topic because we got to call it around. But yeah. it's I related to." having the lights on or lights off in the bedroom, you know, visually as animals, just going to throw that out there. In the visually, bedroom. visually being involved in fishing is I think an extra reward. Yeah. We all want to catch fish, but visually seeing the fish from start to finish. I think that's, that's why humans lean towards it. So then I'm, bed, I'm not seeing bed fishing, the bed fishing versus top water. <laughs> like bed, you can bed see the fish. You just why, dangle a little thing in front of them and bang. That's why people love to see clear water bed fishing to go over there to visually see them enticing the fish from start to finish. That's why people love it. Bed. I'm going to get a McRib. <laughs> Fix, you can take me off air. I'm going to grab a yeah. McRib. You can't always get a McRib. That's McRib the thing. Is it does because you don't want a McRib. Because they're overrated. So <laughs> right. you have to only make them available one month out of the year. So right. you're like, oh, this is um, different. Yeah. But like, that's why if you cut yeah, if you cut top water, I think uh, perfect. If you cut top water every day, there's the only way you can catch fish. You'd be like, man, I really wish I could catch a fish under the water. You're exactly right. God, I wish yeah. I could just catch something on a Carolina rig. I wish I could just catch something. End of sentence. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we, that's so people that catch a lot of fish. Seat, that's kind of the deal. Oh, we have a is, collar on Is when you catch. <laughs> yeah, when you. I'm still uh, here. We've been, I'm we've just been, hanging out. <laughs> Go ahead, caller. <laughs> no, that, What's your that's piece? So good, Ralphie. Did you just call him Ralphie? Yeah, I heard wow, him. wow. That's my oh, did I say Ralphie? Right my bad, Ralphie. Ralphie. Sorry, I got tongue tied. 
Don't worry, you're fl- <laughs> don't worry, you're no, flying Spirit, no, you're flying Spirit deal. Airlines to uh to I guess. So congratulations. That's- Spirit Airlines, sweet. Um, no, but that's the deal though. It, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day what I'm using to catch fish. It's it's what's working I, now. There are funner ways to catch fish. I, I I mean, you can go out and drag a worm all day long, you know, and and sit there and make a bajillion casts and not have any reward just like you go make a million top water casts and not get a bite. Wait, did you just say the, that a funner is, did you just say that a funner way to catch fish is to drag a worm all day? I don't think so. No, I'm saying that, oh. <laughs> that it's the funner way to catch fish is the way you catch fish. Okay. And I love that it, that my English is spectacular. But you know what I mean? It's 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 like so if top water is not working, it's overrated to me that day. But if top water is on, trust me, there is nothing I would rather do than go get on a shad spawn and just watch blow ups all day long. Mm. So I don't know. I, I love it. I I love that he he brought a good point up that you know we have this conversation about you know our favorite way to catch fish or our favorite frog or whatever in all honesty we're all the same way yeah it, it's whatever they're biting on is what we're using and you know that that's a spinner bait in january that i have it doesn't matter what i'm doing when i'm catching bass i'm having a good time okay so let me let me put and, this all uh, this whole discussion this is the way to end the discussion with everyone okay. and some people will go with it i love top water I'm going to start with that. Number two, I like catching fish more because I use the technique that's most productive. If a person says top water is the best, I immediately will ask them, do you always fish top water? If they say top water is the best, that's why I agree top water is overrated. Yes, it's fun. It may be more fun. It's more visually rewarding, but that is not the only way that I fish. And realistically, it's about 10% of the time I'm throwing top water. But if a person says top water, all day and they commit to that i'm just going to say congratulations you may be the only person in the world that i would ever meet so the top water only crowd go for it use top water all day but i don't know of an angler that is top water all day i know of an angler that's drop shot all day yeah i i do know that person well, I'll tell you what, the angler that's drop shot all day, he's probably referencing my wife. She uses drop shot first because it's the by default what finicky fish will eat. She catches a fish or two and then uses something that may be more rewarding or maybe more difficult. So Kelly will catch a fish or two drop shot and then go to a big rat mm. and then try to have some fun in a different way. But guaranteed she's going out first cast is going to be drop shot something she's connected to that has confidence in so she's a kind of a different person in that world of maybe fishing the smartest thing first which is not what most of us do no it's pretty smart right so we always want to start with the most rewarding right yeah no it's like i want to fish catch fish my way it's like well just catch fish the way that fish like to eat so thanks no, it's good. Thanks for the call. I mean, that's it's fun. It's a good discussion. The top router overrated. People get super offended. I think it's funny. We're all really here just to catch fish, and we all fish so many different ways. Go fish. Go fish with what works. Absolutely. Well, yeah. you guys have a good evening. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks, man. We lost Rick. I'm not. I'm not hearing Rick. Hey Rick, what did you find? I don't know. Can Rick hear me? Did you? What did you find inside that frog when you cut it apart? Uh, I'd be happy to show everybody. It was. Uh, I mean, I was curious to know like the line tie on the inside. So, I'll. Uh, I mean, I'm happy to show you. So you know this frog, and uh, sorry, Fix has gone to the front house to get the uh, my car. It just got dropped off. Um, so the line tie. I wanted to see like how it was fastened on the inside, and basically, it's literally just basically like a loop knot on the inside you can't see it really well but it's just basically a loop knot to the uh to the frog hook and uh and i wanted to see how it was glued if there was glue glue on the inside which there isn't it's only on the outside but then what's interesting i don't know if you can see this so there's there's a weight glued on the inside as well and uh and I wanted to see like how big the weight was, how they positioned it, 
And I ended up cutting open uh, three of them. And and they're literally in the, the weight is glued almost in exactly the same place every time. So they really thought this frog through. And uh, and is and, the weight on is the weight on the butt end of the frog kind of back where the bend of the hooks are? Yeah, it's 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 basically so I don't know if you can see it or not, but the V, it's basically yeah. like right in the middle of the V. So that's a displace when you got yeah. your frog and it's sitting in the water. It, it countersinks the butt end. So when right. you go to pull it, pop it, it actually has that angle and can lift up over things in front of it. So yeah. that's smart. Yeah. And it's and, uh, and it's it's a Kona hook. I don't know if most people probably haven't heard of Kona hooks. Kona hooks are really, uh, really great frog hooks that uh, are used by a lot of the frog companies. They just don't tell you. And then I ended up cutting open... Uh, I cut open a, an air tail stick since I had the knife out. I figured like, let's look at the air tail a little bit more and, and, and all that fun stuff. But we don't, we won't get into that now. So it's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if we actually settled the debate, but we did take yeah. some people's opinions and, uh, which was kind of interesting. Um, so there you have it. Yeah, you know, I'd say I don't think it can settle. I, I don't think you can settle it. I think people are going to want to fish the way they want to fish. And I really think when you catch a really good fish on top water, you're going to probably think that's the greatest way for a while. When you catch a really good fish on a swim bait, I think the one thing to consider the whole discussion is once you hook a fish, what is that fishing experience of getting it to the boat. I think about that a lot. When I use a big swim bait, mm -hmm. you hook a fish deep hook set and you're reeling it in as fast as you can get it to the boat because it can turn against that big bait and your chances of having it spit the hook are high. So you basically reel it in as fast as you can. When you hook a fish on a size one octopus hook, drop shot or something yeah. and that fish swims up to your boat and gets the first view of you or the net and then it turns and runs back down that whole dance becomes a pretty exciting thing and that small mouth interaction mike iconelli is a guy to watch like he's pulling out his extra drag he's dancing around doing all that extra stuff that becomes part of fishing as well in that experience so it's fun to really pinpoint what you enjoy is it the hook set is it the fish fight is it landing it is it looking at it is it telling your friends you caught that pb number mm. i think it's different for everyone i think part of it is is when you go home and what do you remember the most is it bragging to your friends that i caught a seven pound bass or wow i was really connected with my experience out there and and what your memory keys into i think that's what's more important and that's why people you know we all so different that's the cool yeah. part about it yeah different strokes different folks i get it so yeah. uh yeah, great great show and uh you know, before we go, I, I did mention that uh, I wasn't done shopping. And, and so there's a lot of interesting companies out there, Chris. Like, it's, 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 it's so funny, like, the number of people that try to get into this industry because they're so passionate about fishing and they think, well, I'm going to start a jig company. And then they get into it and they realize, oh, my God, I just gave away all my weekends forever. And when everyone else is fishing, I got to go do this because it's my side hustle. And so there's a lot, there's, there is no shortage of companies that are uh, up for sale. And, uh, you know, part of me thinks it might be easier to go buy a frog company as opposed to design one because I am not good at this thing. I am not, I've worked with, I've worked with designers and some of their designs are awful, awful. So I don't know what I'm going to do, but I think. Do you have I, any I, insight? Do you, do you know what you're looking for? Do you have some, you have something yeah. you can share with us? Because. I always yeah. want to be in the mind of Rick. Like, give us yeah. some insight. What are you looking at? So I'm looking at, uh, I would love to acquire a frog company if I could find one, uh, something proven. I mean, the key for me is I don't want to take on too much infrastructure. I want to be able to slide it into what we're currently doing. Um, I don't, you know, uh, I don't want to pay a lot. So if you're sitting on X number of dollars worth of inventory, I'd love to buy your company for X number of dollars. And uh, I want retail. If you're not in retail consumption, if you don't have retail consumption, I'm not buying the company because it's, it's hard enough taking a brand like Grande Bass, which is, you know, sold at over 50 locations and then trying to get more, let alone take a brand new brand and try and stuff it down retail. That's hard. So uh, that's what I'm looking for. And I'd love a consumable, uh, whether it's terminal tackle, you know, tungsten weights, uh, soft plastics, 
Jigs are interesting, but I don't think the profit margins are there because, I mean, we sell those things for like, I mean, just now they're starting to increase the prices into the fives and, you know, you're not going yeah. to sixes for a jig. I mean, you're just, you're just not. And so the margins yeah, aren't Like really hand-tied hand jig, multiple pieces, silicone skirts, living rubber, all these different things with a jig. The What a, what a, what a tough thing to be involved in because that's oh. a great bait. Works great. It, it takes a lot of moving pieces to make a right jig. It's it's weird how we've underserved that portion of the fishing community that we put a price tag. Probably, you know, that when Mikey Balls will say with, you know, bigs for jigs, all these different things, big fish, that's going to bring out the bites. Price tag, mm -hmm. probably one of the cheapest baits that you have out there. Totally. Kind of inter interesting. Totally. Yeah, I'm hoping to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm evaluating a few others. Uh, I'm hoping to close on one in the next two weeks. Terminals and terminal like tungsten's an interesting one because I, I I'm, I'm passionate about terminal be, or sorry tungsten because lead is just awful, right? Yeah. Like there's a reason why states are starting to ban it. It's probably only a matter of time before everyone does. It just sits in our lakes and pollutes it, and uh, you know it won't be long before Grande Bass has to make their product out of recycled material, um, yeah. and that'll be a changer as well. So who knows? But uh, yeah, I think there's a few That's things awesome. in the future that we're uh, we're looking at. Is there somebody on the line? Who is it? They've never called in before. Let's, let's just take it. Let's, let's just take it really yeah. quick, and then we'll call I it a day. Go ahead, caller. Hey guys. So hey. one thing that a lot of people don't realize with, with uh, frogs, you don't have to have grass, and you have to have the right equipment. You don't go throw a jig on a fairy wand and it's the same thing with a frog everybody wants to throw them on a broomstick you need a soft tip because mm -hmm. otherwise you're not going to get the action you want and you can throw them on a lake you can throw frogs in lay downs on rocks anywhere and that's where uh, everybody gets confused they think you have to have pads and grass but here's mm -hmm. the kicker if you flip a jig into a brush pile that fish can wrap you up and he's gone for good if you get him to eat that top water, you've already won the battle because he's already part of the way to the boat and he can't get you wrapped up. Yep. You're not wrong. Spot on. I like it. And yeah. at the end of the day, think about it. On a top water, unless they're schooling fish, mm -hmm. you're going to get a better quality bite. Typically, a frog fish, you're going to get one that's five plus, at least down here in the south. Mm -hmm. And even up north, your better quality bites are going to be top water bites. And the other thing that a lot of people forget about, you don't have to stop once the sun gets up. You know, I've fished the opens, and I've fished from coast to coast, north to south, all over the U.S. I've caught four and five pounders in the middle of the day, in the middle of the summer, on top water. Because mm. it's something nobody else is willing to do. You, if you're fishing near the structure, and you're fishing near where the fish are, You've got a good shot. It's an easier meal because the, whatever is on top, whether it's a, a dying bait fish, whether it's a bluegill, a shad, a frog, you know, a baby bird, they're not seeing it, so they don't run to try to get away. Mm -hmm. Unlike if you're move, so on a moving bait. You're on, man. You're, you're spot on. There's frog tournaments that are frog only all day long. They happen on the Delta out here. I know they do them on other lakes. Spro does that. Frogs are frogs make good sense anywhere. The the beauty of a frog is it is the only bait you can really throw top water through those pads. So your spot people get kind of confused yeah. with that. So no, thanks for the call. We appreciate it. Right, get out there catching fish, and you can catch them year round, depending on yeah. you know where you're at in the country. Yeah, I mean down here in Texas, in January on frog, you're more worried about water temps than you are, you know, the time of year, mm -hmm. and that's where people get hung up. They look at go. Oh well, it's December, but your water temps are still in the high fifties. They will still eat a frog. Yeah, you go to a new, you go to a nuclear reactor lake where they're cooling off your nuclear reactor. It, it doesn't matter what time of year it is; those lakes are always going to be eighty degrees. So you're, you're right. It's water, water temp, and sometimes we just kind of gloss over that. So that's the the fine details. We appreciate you bringing that out, so just people don't get super confused. But so let me ask on the way out: top water only for you? Are you? Can you answer? Would you prefer top water fish? over fish underwater with any other technique if i've got my choice 
I will throw a frog or a uh, chug bug all day, every day. Chug bug, I like it. It's more exciting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's more exciting. It's, you can visually see what happens versus, you know, sometimes you're just dragging a worm and you don't even realize you have a bite until you get it all almost all the way back to the boat. Because sometimes they just pick it up and run at you. And yes, you're going to lose fish on top water just like you lose fish on any other bait. But if you've got the right equipment and you understand how to break down stuff and how to set the hook properly based on the bait that you're using, you're going to have more success. Oh, we appreciate it, man. I, you just committed. You're you're a lights on kind of guy. You know, we gotta we're gonna be signing off, but no, I, it's visual. It's it's fun. It's a good time. Top yeah. water. Yeah, I didn't. Talk I, I, I didn't catch your name. What was it? Uh, Brandon. Brandon. Uh, I commented on the live several times. It's Brandon Clayton fishing or B Clayton fishing. Right on. Sweet. Right on. Hey, I appreciate you calling in, man. Not a problem. All right. See you later. <clears throat> all right that was a great show we're ending right on time it's great um what'd you think chris you know i think it's fun i love, love to dive into people's ideas of like what's better what's not what's cool what's fun mm. visually speaking i think as anglers we go outside and and the visual treat of being outside connecting that to the fish like it's a beautiful sport you got these gorgeous fish with all these different colors. You never know what's going to come out of the water. Uh, it's teasing with lights on, lights off, forward-facing sonar, all the different things that we navigate through. Us being outside, creating memories. I think that's what it's really all about. Having a good time, being successful, catching a fish, whether it's your first fish. At a certain point, it doesn't matter how you caught it. You're just outside doing something you love. So uh, super yeah. cool show. Fun to chat. Love it. Uh, wow. <laughs> The show is over. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow, fix. Wow, fix. <laughs> wow, overrated. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I thought. I thought it was. See, I, you know what? Can we can we fin just pin the one that says Ar Arthur's my guy tonight? This show is the top water of podcasts. Okay, can we just let's just end with that? <laughs> yeah. That's it. All right. All right. I can done. do that. I'm out. Done. <laughs> End the show, Fix. Thank you guys for tuning Thanks, in. Andy. We'll see you next week.